Welcome to Recreational Power Sports. My name is Andreas. A lot of you have texted in a lot of your concerns and questions, and they're awesome. They're all really, really good questions. And I just want to start with a few basic starting points for every conversation I have about propellers. The most important conversations to have with you are what kind of boat and motor do you have, what pitch are you running, and at what RPM. The most important thing about you telling me the boat and motor is I have an idea for how much power you have and what weight we're dealing with and then what your needs are. Are you cruising, recreational fun, we deal with a pontoon boat, what are we using the boat for? And then how many people we're going to add to the boat that's going to weigh it down. And it all comes down to the propeller. Believe it or not, beautiful boat, beautiful motor, great sunny day. It all came down to the salesman who sold you the prop. And no one wants to talk about the propeller because they think it's inconsequential. That's like talking to the car dealership about your car tires when you buy your brand new car. Do they tell you about the car tires in your brand new car? No. You just jump in the car and say, I assume they're all season tires and away I go. Propellers are like tires. They're like, they can be bald. They can be all wheel drive blizzacks with uh, studded tires on them. That's the stainless steels. It's really important to know basically what kind of boat you got, your motor, which determines your prop. So I need to know your pitch. And then I need to know with whatever pitch, the pitch is like saying what gear are you choosing on a bike? You're gonna go on a bike, your motor is you, your legs are trying to pump that bike as fast as you can, and you're gonna add people on the handlebars of your bike, you're gonna put somebody on the seat, you're gonna put a skateboarder behind you, maybe it's a tube, but you're gonna be on your bike, your motor has to pick a gear. Pick the gear, which is picking what pitch of prop you wanna run. That pitch, say it's a 17 pitch prop. That's like saying to me, Andreas, I'm in 17th gear. This pitch governs how fast your feet are pedaling on your bike. When you change gears in your bike from first gear to third gear to fifth gear, your feet are going really fast to a little slower to really slow. As you gear up and change gears and go higher in pitch, that means your feet are going slower on the pedals as you go up. The RPM comes down. And if you go in too high of a gear on your bike going up a hill, what happens? You can't turn the pedals no more and you fall over because it becomes gutless. The horsepower of the motor is going to give you so much, so much power and govern what gear I can put you in. And then when you add more people to your boat, you add more weight to your boat, which also depends what gear I want to put you in. Because if you add too many people to your boat, I got to gear you down. Like most people on tournament ski boats got to gear themselves down because they're wake surfing at such a low speed that they need their RPM to be up to keep the motor nice and peppy so they don't cause what's called detonation in the motor. So I'm trying to do a balancing act of four mile per hour, miles per hour is what's going to happen between these pitches of prop and it's 400 RPM. So I'm trying to get the motor to rev at its optimal red line, which is usually, say it's a four stroke motor, usually 6,000 RPM. So a four stroke 90 horsepower Merc uh, EFI motor, I'm probably gonna pitch it, I hate to say it, down to even maybe even an 11 pitch, depending on what boat you guys are on. If it's a pontoon boat, it depends if you have the command thrust or the non-command thrust. There's a lot of little questions I gotta ask you, but if you can just get me a baseline saying, Andreas, I'm running a 13 pitch prop on a 90 horsepower motor. I'm on a pontoon boat and it's a 22 footer. And then I'm running this 13 pitch prop and I'm getting, for lack, I'm getting 5,600 RPM at wide open throttle. The math is going to say to you then, if you drop down to an 11 pitch prop, your RPM is going to go up 400 RPM to 6,000. And then you're going to be running at, 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 that's your maximum RPM, but that's going to give you the maximum power to load your pontoon boat up full of eight, 10 people. Why not put the maximum capacity on the boat and invite people to come boating with you. That's the whole idea of, of boating is you don't want to do it alone. 
in order to compensate with the weight, I gotta pitch you down to get the RPM up so it's not a gutless wonder. There's a balancing act. And aluminum and stainless steel does matter a huge amount. Next, the next question we get a lot is, what's the difference between stainless steel and aluminum? And what's the difference between a three, four, and a five bladed stainless steel prop? Or just props in general? My biggest thing to tell you about stainless steel and aluminum is, aluminum is great for fishing, uh, going in a straight line, maybe wakeboarding, water skiing, knee boarding. But as soon as you go round and round and round and round three times, you want to turn the board on a dime and go 60 feet and put the tubers right in the middle of your hurricane. You can't do that with an aluminum prop because it's ball tires in the back of a limo. You know, it just goes, <laughs> spins out, stops. And everybody's saying, go, 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 go. But you can't go because the aluminum prop spins out and stops you dead in your tracks. The stainless steel prop will turn, hook and grab and then go. That's the beauty of stainless. The biggest place you find this going on is what I call the V6 gear cases or the four and three quarter size gear case, which is the bigger motors um, have this option a lot. Some of the smaller motors have an option for a three, three blade or four blade propeller. The biggest way I can uh, address this is three people canoeing or four people canoeing. In the quarter mile, in the bottom end of having fun, you know, slalom skiing, uh, wakeboarding, knee boarding, the four bladed prop aluminum versus a three blade aluminum prop, I'd say the four blade aluminum is better because it gives you better push off the line, better takeoff. Again, four people canoeing versus three. At top end cruising speed, then it switches on you. It's actually a trade off. The bottom half, four blade pushes better is awesome. The top half of cruising down the lake Mach 1 with the air on fire, the four bladed prop, because there's an extra blade in the water, actually starts to slow you down um, because there's an always there's always one propeller blade in the water creating drag. So again, answer the question, three blades are great for cruising, four blades great for the bottom half of recreational fun. The difference between a three, four and a five blade stainless, um, very important um, with the boat weight, with the motor power, um, and the size of the boat. You get these big king fishers, well, they make a big over, uh, an oversized prop for that. So does Mercury, they make, you know, their Trophy Plus, Laser Plus. They make these plus size elephant ear props. Whereas your Mercruisers just want a normal four and, and a quarter gear case prop. Uh, like a 14, 17, 14, 19. Um, the High Five, which was the five bladed prop was awesome, but Mercury cheated with that prop, I love it. The High Five, is a 13 and a quarter diameter prop, so it's smaller, which acts like a turbo on the bottom end. is very good for Mer cruisers because it really helps them get that snap out of the hole to get them the power they need. Because it's a four-stroke car engine, it needs a little more help to get going because of all the weight. The High Five was great for that. Well, they we haven't made it for a few years now, unfortunately. So we go to the three-blade stainless steel or a four-blade stainless steel, as long as the pitch is right. Best analogy is is. If the boat's too big for the motor, I give you a three blade stainless. If the motor can handle the boat and the boat isn't too heavy or too big or too long, then I, I give you a four bladed stainless because it's got better push. I'm trying to help that heavy weight get going. And you can't do that with an aluminum prop because they bend and flex so bad, it's just ball tires on the back of a limo. So let's get some four wheel driving going on. You know what I'm saying? So some of you guys have, have, have asked about hydrofoils. I do like hydrofoils. Um, I don't not like them. I think they have their place. I think the biggest thing to help you with a hydrofoil is get the correct propeller, get the get the boat and motor humming at the right RPM. Because if you have the motor running too low of RPM, it's going to be gutless. It's like you being on a bike in too high of a gear. Adding a hydrofoil only makes the the gutless situation even more gutless because now you got this big hydrofoil on the back in essence you're trying to push the back end up to get the nose down quicker but if your motor is gutless to begin with it even makes it feel more gutless so let's say your boat has the proper um, propeller on it my next question might be back in the 80s um, you might have to put a wedge in your motor to get more of a negative trim angle 
because you're trying to get the nose of the boat down and sometimes the negative tri trim angle on an upward um, is crucial and they do make transom wedges which is one thing to consider the hydrofoil overall is pretty good i like them on Merc cruisers to tell you the honest truth Merc cruisers um, with the hydrofoil work really well because when those boats do my little round and round and round with a tube and then they cut the boat on a dime with their stainless steel prop that big wash when the boat goes this way and washes all this water and wants to go that way at that exact second it wants to transition from this motion to that motion the hydrofoil helps the propeller not suck the surface air but actually grab more water uh, hydrofoils on inflatable boats i find have a place too because inflatable boats are such like a like an like a, an accordion they flex and they move you have the hull manipulating the back of the motor and the back of the motor gets all this flexing going on and what really is going on is there's a war between the the, the hull and the motor and i'm trying to have the motor manipulate the hull not the hull manipulate the motor so adding a bigger more or less hydrofoil fin because this always wants to be straight and level allows the motor to fight back against the hull on an inflatable to keep it going straight and true and also allows the prop not to suck surface air and keep it actually sucking water so um, hydrofoils do have their place as long as you address the rpm and the prop first then we move into hydrofoils absolutely i'm andreas of recreational power sports and i hope i helped you help me help you thanks again thanks for watching